guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. This is video number eight in my series, Astrophotography Target Tips. Hard to believe, video number eight already. Were you able to catch number seven on the Eagle Nebula? Hopefully you were. That was a, a beautiful target that I really enjoyed, not only imaging, but processing those beautiful pillars of creation. And uh, one of my favorite targets to date, for sure. I really enjoyed it. So if you haven't checked out that video, take a look. And hopefully you'll be able to get out there and image the Eagle Nebula for yourself. I really enjoyed it. Also, I'm going to be giving this print away, this nice metal print. Um, I'm hoping to get to 2,000 followers fairly soon on my Instagram, at Keys of the Cosmos, all one word. So if you're not following, please do. And I'll have details hopefully soon on uh, a giveaway for this print and maybe some of my other ones as well. But stay tuned for that. So let's talk about our target for this video, M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. Now this is a nice because it's a bit of a different target. I've never actually done a planetary nebula before. We've talked a lot about emission, We've done some galaxies, some star clusters, but planetary nebula is a different type of target that I personally never um, imaged before and have never shared on this channel. So here's some facts about M27, the Dumbbell Nebula itself. And while I show that, I'll try to explain briefly what a planetary nebula is. Now, the name is a bit of a misnomer. People wonder, does it have anything to do with planets or why do they call it that? Well, no, it doesn't. It's basically just a red giant star that at the end of its life, goes boom, it explodes, it ejects ionized gas all around it, and that ionized gas forms a beautiful sort of concentric shape all around that now just core of a star that's left remaining, and it's usually very bright and very beautiful. And usually it's a roundish, sometimes like sort of like an eye shape, but it definitely has a distinct round shape to it, unlike the Mission Nebula, which can be all over the place. And, you know, it provides a very beautiful target for us as astronomers and astrophotographers. So how it got its name? Well, from what I understand, early astronomers with their primitive telescopes were viewing these things in the sky that sort of resembled a planet. They could see the round, the red, um, the round sort of outer shape of that ejected gas. And I guess it reminded them of a planet. So that's what they called it. Um, but it has nothing to do with planets. It's simply a dying star that explodes and ejects that ionized gas. And it's one of the nice things I like about this target and many of the planetary ones, they're usually different colors, not just red and pink like a Mission Nebula. This one in particular, the dumbbell is has a lot of green in it, which is nice. I like to, to image green. It reminds you of Thor's helmet as well. So um, it's a little bit something different and, and I enjoyed uh, imaging it and processing it. So let's talk about that. How to, everything we need to know to capture and process the Dumbbell Nebula. So first of all, how do we locate it? Well, it's located in the constellation Volpecula. So um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, probably not, but it's a small constellation that's basically right underneath Cygnus. We've talked about Cygnus many times on uh, this channel. It's the summer swan, you know, so many beautiful targets and this uh, constellation is just underneath it and this target. So the easiest way to find it, uh, I had some challenges with this and I'll explain that in a second. But I would say the easiest way to find this is if you think of uh, Cygnus, the summer swan, that star that forms the head is called Albireo, I believe. And so once you find Albireo, which you should be able to see, no problem. I can see it in my Boreal Nine skies very quickly. Um, just go straight down and that's where M27 is. Now for some context of how far down to go, you're not probably have let your eyes adjust, but there are two dim stars that are fairly close together and just sort of up on an angle from each other. So once you look down from a bureau and find those, basically, if you think of that as one side of a V, you bring a line up to the other side and that's where M27 is. Hopefully you can see that here in this image. Now, the trouble I had was I did my research. I thought I knew exactly where it was and I was pointing my telescope all around, you know, trying to create a sort of a V from those two stars up to M27. I even went a little bit over because I know it wasn't quite a perfect V. It was sort of a lopsided V and I could not find it. I mean, I was searching, I was getting frustrated. It was almost over an hour, I think, or just around an hour. And then finally, I just happened to swing my telescope over to the right and there it popped up on the screen. And you'll know when you see uh, M27, it's very distinct. You see that green color and it's quite bright. So don't think that, well, maybe it's small, I'm not seeing it. It is very small, but you'll see it even with a small refractor on the back of your camera or on your uh, tablet, depending on what camera you're using. So in order to best explain it, here's that image again of those two stars, but here's actually where I found uh, personally M27. So hopefully that helps you if you're trying to find it manually. Um, it did give me some trouble, but on the second night, once I found it, 
and I knew to look more to the right, I found it immediately. I think it was the first try and I just uh, framed it up. So that brings us into our next section, framing. Um, basically, you know, this is a small target. So just try to get as centered as you can, unless you're using a super giant telescope, um, which you're probably not. Like me, you're using a smaller refractor, just try to get it centered. And even if you're doing multiple imaging, you have lots of room, trust me, you will be doing quite a significant crop on this one. So I recommend uh, moving into integration and acquisition, I recommend at least a 72 millimeter and up. Um, you could probably capture the 60s, um, 60 millimeter plus, but for the best results, I would say, you know, at least a 72 millimeter and up. If you're using like a red cat, I mean, yeah, you'll see it. It'll be very small though. And it's, and the whole idea with this target, we'll talk about this in processing, is to try and pull out not just the shape of it, because that's easy, trying to get the details within it. And in order to do that, you need to do a significant crop. In order to do that, you need a good amount of time. So that moves us into integration. Um, I captured seven hours on this particular target. Um, you can definitely get an image of it with just two or three, even from Boral Nine Skies like mine. But if you want to get details, and there's actually a little bit of gas that forms like a sort of a shell around the main shape, you're going to need to sink some time. So if you really want to go for it, especially with a small refractor, I recommend doing at least five hours plus. Um, I probably would have benefited from another three to four hours. Um, I'd, I'd get even more details. I'd probably be able to do a little bit more of a crop without losing de losing quality. And I'd probably get more of that outer shell, which you'll see in the final image. But yeah, I did seven hours over two nights uh, of integration time. And again, I was using my Sharpstar 76 millimeter. I was using my newest Astro dedicated camera, the ASI 294 MC Pro. I talked about that in the acquisition of this target, the Eagle. And of course, with that, I have to use my ASI Air, which is the little Raspberry Pi based computer that controls everything. And of course, it's riding on my little star tracker. Um, so nothing different there, but you can easily capture this target with a DSLR, no problem. So as far as processing, let's talk about that. Uh, processing, I'm not gonna say it's a challenge, but if in order to pull out the detail, and that's where you're gonna have a little bit more trouble. Here's a, here's my, here's, first of all, here's a, a single exposure. Um, you can see it's very bright, easily seen. You can even see a little bit of detail around the edges. No problem there. You can see the green, a little bit of orange. So that was exciting to see. Um, now here is a stacked image at seven hours. Now you'll see it's quite bright. You can see, I don't know so much on this video, but in person on my phone, I can see the nebula itself quite bright. Um, so as I mentioned, it is, it is fairly bright and, and visible. But you're going to be doing a good sized crop most likely and uh, the challenge will be to pull out the details in the center of that nebula without blowing it out you'll see a lot of images of m27 at least i do you see that nice green you see the orange around the edges but then the, the center just looks white and blown out and i really wanted to try to avoid doing that so i'm going to try to help you see how i was able to do that with um, photoshop so basically after i did i don't know maybe two or three curve stretches and adjustment levels adjustment it popped right out. I mean, there it was, you could see clear color, you could see some details around the edges, but the center part was still quite faint. And I found that when I did any more stretching after two or three, uh, it started to blow out right away. So what I did was, I've talked about this before with some of the other brighter uh, emission nebula, even the Eagle, in fact, that's a bright, very bright core. So what I did just like the Eagle is I lassoed off that center part and then I went to um, select at the top of Photoshop and I selected inverse. So basically, whatever you lasso, it's now protecting and you're working on everything around it. So once I lassoed that off and selected inverse, I did a couple more um, stretches and levels adjustments. So that protected the core and sort of brought out more gas from around it. I was trying to pull out that, sh that shell that I mentioned earlier and that was, I was able to pull a little bit of that out. You'll see it in my final image. Not much, but you can see it. Um, and still protecting that core. So once I did that and I was happy with it and it wasn't looking um, too far off in color or lo looking very obvious that I had protected that core and now it's a different color or a different tone. Once I was happy with that, I reselected the entire image and then I went to camera raw filter and I made my, my you know, more final adjustments, my, you know, texture tab and highlights and blacks and you know even contrast just to sort of play with it 
and and sort of bring out that core without blowing it out. Now, I obviously, as I mentioned, you're gonna be doing a quite a, a significant crop. This is, I would say, on par with like Thor's helmet. It's quite small. Um, so I, I found if I cropped it too much, I would lose quality. It was just too much. Um, so I dialed it back. I would have loved to, you know, have just the dumbbell in, in, in the picture with very little space around it, but that's just not realistic. Um, you have to sort of find a balance where you're, you're doing a significant crop, but you're also not losing quality on the, the details themselves. So that's what I did. I did. As I mentioned, I always do that crop fairly early on in the processing. That's how I do it. I also did a star reduction, you know, with these small detailed uh, nebula, I like to do a star reduction. It's just, it, I find the stars take away from the detail of the nebula itself. You want that, in my opinion, to be the focus, the sort of center of attention. So I did all that and then I worked on, as I mentioned, um, camera raw filter and just did little minor adjustments here and there. Play with it, see what you like. And um, I think you'll find that fair, without doing a ton of processing and spending a ton of time, you're, you're able to get a fairly quality image. The details, you know, that's up to you how, how crazy you want to go with lassoing off, you know, parts of the center and, and trying to pull them out. But I just say be careful because the more you do that, the more you risk that it's going to be really obvious that you did that and it'll show. And you want the whole image to look very natural and uh, as if you captured it all at once, which you did, but as if you processed it all at once as well. So that's really the only challenge I, I, I would say. Um, but definitely I'm going to be imaging this particular target with a bigger refractor. You can see some images online and on Instagram where they capture with like a 150 millimeter refractor, which I know isn't realistic for most people. I certainly don't own one that big. But when you do, with all that focal length, you're able to capture so much detail in, in this target and really do it justice. I did my best, as I mentioned, it's not the ideal telescope for a target like this, but uh, I'm fairly happy with it. And I think it's, 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 I got some decent details in the center. So hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, I'll be showing that picture shortly. But I just want to say, as always, thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully my mount is coming this week or next. So I'll be able to throw a bigger refractor on and, and you know, zoom in on some of these smaller targets. There's other planetary nebula I want to do, like the Helix Nebula. That's still a bit early for that, but I'm definitely going to be imaging that. That's uh, uh, very similar and a really cool target. So I look forward to doing that, but I've already started another one. It's not an emission nebula, so something a little different again. I'm just waiting to see on this weather. It's been so bad. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate on the East Coast, whether it's the States or Canada. The weather here has been so rainy and cloudy. Hopefully that changes soon and I'll have more uh, images for you shortly. But thank you as always, guys. I appreciate your support. Without further ado, here is my image of M27, the Dumbbell Nebula. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one.